In this lesson, I want to continue building on the previous lessons where we were using the cubes. Now, what I've got here is a tin of Derwent Inktense blocks. Now, they also do them in pencils. Now, let me show you what they look inside, look like inside. There they go, the 72 in the range. And they correspond exactly the same as the pencils. If we take a closer look, at this one for example, there's a sleevey that you can take on, put on and take off like that. And if we look a close up, we've got the details of each block. On the left it says England, then Derwent Ink Tents, and then it's got a number, I don't know if you can see that number there on the right hand side, that corresponds with the chart that I'm going to show you in a minute. So I'll just pop this back down. I made this chart up when I was using the pencils. Now, as you can see, we've got the colour names and the corresponding code number. 72 in the range. And so I can just double check if I want to what it looks like in this block. In Derwent's range of pencils, on the end here, they've got this particular one and it's called the Outliner. Now, that's a waterproof one. Now the reason why it's waterproof, with these ink tents, blocks and pencils, we use water over the top. They act like watercolour paints, but because this is waterproof, we can use it as an outliner or a shader. Now I'm going to show you on these blocks what I mean. As you can see, I've turned the two-dimensional shape into a, a three-dimensional cube. I've also done the same with the second cube. Now I'm going to shade the first cube to give it some tonal areas. Using this little eraser, I'm just going to take off areas at the side where I've gone over. Just using a brush rather than blowing to get rid of them bits. Now I'm going to use this poppy red number 0400 ink tense block to colour this and colour this. I'm going to do this one first. I mean of course I could use a pencil but I'm just going to stick to using the blocks for now. I'm doing all four sides roughly the same. Sometimes I use the corner of the block to get me a more accurate line near the edge. At the minute, the, the three sides are roughly the same. Now I'm just going to darken the second one up and the third one up again. So now these two sides are quite similar. Now I'm going to darken this one up with the third layer on the right. I use the brush lightly to get rid of the bits and erase the little bits where I've gone over. Rub those off. I'm now going to use this brush. I previously used it, as you can see, a little bit of dye, a little bit of red dye on the end. These are ink tents, so they tend to stay in a little bit. Oops, I forgot this. Anyway, I've just coloured that in. Now what I want to do is dip the brush in here, in the water, clean water. Just take off the excess and squeeze it out with your fingers. Now that is just, just damp. You can see that, sorry. It's just damp is that now. No more would come off it if I flicked it like that. Let's do it again so you can see it. Take off the excess. Squeeze it. Squeeze the brush out. Like that. Now, make sure I've got a nice shape. Now, I'm going to go over the first one here. Now, I'm going to start at the top here. I'm going to go across from left to right. Just a little dab like that, and I'm going to go back over that once I picked up the ink to the beginning there, like that. Okay, now I'm going to go to the second one, see if I can see. I can either go straight across like this, which I probably will, keeping it vertical. I can go back to the beginning like that, because I've picked up the same ink. Keep it vertical, and now to the last one. 
So the brush has still got some ink from the previous ones, but I'm not making them darker as I go along. Because they're dark anyway. Now, if I go back to the first one with that, it's going to make that much darker. But that has retained the tonal values, the light, the mid-tone and the darker side. Now, if I do the same with the first block, I'd already shaded in the first block with the waterproof outliner. Now, look at the difference that it gives you. I've squeezed the brush out and it's just damp now. So I'm going to do the same technique with this. Across, come back, apply it again till I'm satisfied. Right, now I'm going to come across here. Now that undertone of the liner changes the whole concept of the colour, as you can see. Now it still retained its tonal values, light, mid-tone and darker. OK, I've got a little bit too much water on that brush, so you've got to be careful, you've got to try to squeeze it out right up to the edges of the brush. Now, it's not saying that one is better than the other. Let's keep that out. What we're showing here is the title of my videos. Options, the different options. If this is more appealing or specific to your artwork, then that's fine. You can do an undertone of cold greys, warm greys, or a black, waterproof black that I've just done there. Or oh, it's a very dark grey, actually. Or we can just use the specific colour layered one on top of the other. So we've got one coat there, two layers there, three layers there. It gives us the tonal range. Now, once the ink tense is dry after applying the damp brush, we can then apply another layer on top without it really affecting the first layer because that dry is waterproof or more or less waterproof. You may see a slight change in it. Um, what we can also do now is using the blocks, we can take a damp brush to the block straight away and apply it straight to the cube. So let me show you what I mean. Now this time I've just squeezed the brush out. I'm just going to, can you see that there if I turn it to the light? Now this time what I'm going to do, the side of the cube I'm going to do first is the darker side. Now I've not drawn the lines and I'm just going to use the brush. Can you see that? Yeah. I'm going to do this side. Now I can do vertically and go straight up like this if I want. Or I can, I can start diagonally. Now that's applying, that's applying the, and I'm not going to put any more ink on. I'm going to then going to go to the second side. Let's see if you can see. I can, I'll go this way. Now there's less colour on it because I've applied it with the first side. See how that? And if I did now do the top, there's even less ink. So I can apply a little bit more on this one just to make sure there's a there is a contrast. There we go. So anyway, you can see straight from the block with a damp brush, we can create the tonal values light, mid-tone and dark on that cube. Once it's dry, we can also repeat that process and it make it more vibrant and more opaque. I'm now just using the outliner again to apply some shading on here. Pressing fairly lightly. The, to press lightly, hold the pen at this end, the pencil at this far end. And it, it, you can just kind of get a more lighter shade. The further down the pencil, it tends to apply heavier uh, shading. So we we'll just do that on this side. Do all the three sides the same. So I'll be back in a minute. That's what happens when it picked up that blob of water. <laughs> it made it darker. Anyway, we're going to apply the same principle straight from the block, straight to that, with some undertone of waterproof liner. Taking the ink from the block, going to the darkest side first. This tonal value underneath will show through. Now, on this side. And then on the top side. Add a little bit more ink so we can get this one a bit more distinct. I've 
course, once it's dry, there you go, that's more or less where I'm trying to get it to. Once that's dry, I can then apply another layer on the top. As you can see, comparing this one where I just used the colour compared to these two, where we had the undertone applied with the uh, waterproof pencil. That's more vibrant, it's more natural. Now, we'll get on to discussing the shadow side later on, where we use the complementary colour to give him more natural shadow. Now here I've just used that one colour of poppy red, but I will add green later on to the shadow side. Now the cast shadow is a different subject altogether. That's where we've got the ambient light, whether it's outside in the sunshine, you know, the sky colour, a bit of blue, a bit of purple, and we've got reflected light. So we'll discuss cast shadows are entirely different. It also depends on the what it's been cast on. If your table's blue or it's green, it's going to look a bit different. Okay. So now we'll continue with this cube. But this time I want to cover a different material. We'll come back to the ink tents later on. But now I just want to use markers. Now you can use any markers. Pro markers. Uh, these are Copic markers. And I'm going to use the light green. Okay show you what the colour range were there. So I'm just going to use this light green. Now on that end you've got a pointed end, on the other end you've got like a chisel like that. Now I'm just going to use this end. I'm just going to colour all the sides in the same and I'm going to do it with a marker. You do it in a circular motion like this. Just start in that corner. Now the circular motions stops this overlap too much where it gives you dark and lighter lines. So I'm just doing that one and I'm going to do all the sides the same. Again, I'll wait for these to dry before I apply a third layer on this side. There we go. So we've got the lightest, mid-tone and darkest side. So these tonal values are giving the tonal areas, or the tonal areas are giving the tonal values. The markers are very good. They're alcohol based, or most of them are, I think. They dry very quick and you can also colour on the top of them using the pencils, coloured pencils. With the last cube, I'm just going to go straight to the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils. These are not the watercolour ones. These are the standard, high quality, artist pigment pencils. As you can see, these are a small tin of 12, beautiful range of colours. There's 120 colours in this range. I have got all the colours and I'll show you them later on. But if you've got a lot, it gives confusion. So I'm just going to stick to this small tin for now. And we're going to select, let's have a look at the colours. We'll select, let's go for a blue, thalo blue. Again, the technique I'm using on this cube is just to do the three sides to show the tonal values. With light, mid-tone and darker. Just using the one colour. I want to get all the three sides looking the same. Now the action of the pencil I'm doing is little ovals, not circles, ovals. And they kind of slightly overlap each other. Like this. And what that does, it gives a nice even coverage.
These ovals are a little bit like using the Copic markers or the Pro markers. So now all the three sides are the same, roughly. I'm going to now apply another coat, another layer to each of these two sides. Now I'm going to apply a third coat, third layer on this side. As you can see now we've got the lightest, mid-tone and darker side. Now I haven't applied heavy pressure with a pencil. Now if I apply heavy pressure we then get into the realms of burnishing. Now burnishing gives that a look of something that's more painted. It's a bit, it's a bit enamel looking. More vibrant, more stronger colour, more opaque. We can also use a blender, a blender pencil. Now these Faber-Castell Polychromos are oil based, not wax based as a lot of websites say, although wax and oil are fairly similar anyway. So the blender that I get for this is a, a oil based blender pencil. But we're going to cover that later on. In the meantime, I'm now going to use this as a burnisher itself. I'm using the same colour. I'm going to apply pressure and see how this changes. We'll start with the dark side first. I'm applying heavy pressure, not so heavy that the uh, lead would break. Still doing the little circle, uh, the little ovals. Look at the difference that's done now. Obviously, I'm not applying as much pressure on this side. Otherwise it'll end up the same as the one on the right. Little ovals crossing over. So the pressure that I'm applying here, of course it's not full burnishing. Because I'm needing that tonal difference. In fact, while I'm here, let me just show you. This is the Prismacolor um, colourless blender. And this is the Lyra. Now this is a solid piece of oil based um, blender, quite specific, and this has got wood with the blender inside. So let me just use that um, to burnish blend this here, see if it makes any difference, the top half. So I'm not applying additional colour, but look how it brings it out. So I'm just applying a colourless oil based, was it oil based wax? I don't know, oil based filler. And look at that, little, little ovals, ovals like this. So it's giving it that nice painterly finish. Again, I can go over here. So it's giving me that burnishing effect, but without applying additional colour. So if you wanted the colour to remain more muted, but still give it that painterly finish, use this blender. Again, rather, don't be tempted to blow bits off. Use a brush, gently. There you go, I blow it at the end. I just make sure there's no spit on my lips. <laughs> so anyway, as you can see I've covered a, a bit of a range of different options. A lot of these options I'm going to cover more specific in detail later on when I show you pages of an, anim an animation book that I'm doing, I'm going to be doing. Uh, it's still in the storyboard stage at the minute. So um, look out for the next video where I continue with the cubes. Later on we're going to shift from cubes to circles, form and shape. So if you like the video, please click like because it makes a big difference to how it gets viewed on YouTube. So as I say, thanks a lot. Subscribe and share with friends. Cheers. See you next time.